Hey what's up everybody it's Dallas with Gadget Hacks and today I'm going to show you how to dual boot your Nexus 6 with multiple ROMs. Now dual booting is a concept that's been around for ages but basically it allows you to install multiple instances of operating systems and choose which one you'd like to run on boot up. For Android devices there's only one dual booting solution, multi-ROM by developer Tassadar. It's actually a set of mods, a modified boot image, a custom build of TWRP recovery for installing multiple ROMs, and a GUI front end. I'm bringing up the components because with the Nexus 6 there are many folks who already use a custom boot image. That's because the boot image houses the device's kernel and in order to disable the forced encryption on the Nexus 6 a lot of people have flashed a custom kernel. What this all boils down to is that if you run this mod your custom kernel will be replaced by the multi-ROM version unless your kernel already includes support for multi-ROM. And since multi-ROM only has a limited selection of supported kernels, you'll need to be running a ROM that's compatible with either the stock Nexus 6 kernel or the Cyanogenmod kernel, but that's practically every ROM. And on the bright side, the multi-ROM kernel does not enforce encryption, so if you've decrypted your phone, it'll stay that way. So that's one thing you should be aware of before starting on this, and for folks that never disabled encryption on their Nexus 6, there's another complication. When booting into one of your ROMs, you'll have to enter your decryption password. If you have not set a block screen security, that password will be default hyphen password. But if you have set up lock screen security on your encrypted Nexus 6, the password to boot into your ROMs will be whatever password you set as your lock screen security. And for this reason, I'd recommend that you use either a PIN or a password instead of the pattern unlock. Multi-ROM's password interface makes it difficult to enter a pattern, but typing in a PIN or a password is easy. Having said all that, you'll need to be rooted with a custom recovery installed to get this one going, but if you need any help with those requirements, just check out my article on Gadget Hacks. Then to get started, you'll need to grab a copy of the latest test build of Tassadar's Multi-ROM Manager app. This version hasn't hit the Play Store just yet, so it'll need to be sideloaded. You can download this APK from the full tutorial as well, so head over there to grab your copy, then go ahead and launch the file. From here, just install the app like any other. Then when that's finished, tap open. Right off the bat, Multi-ROM Manager will ask for super user access, so hit grant on the pop-up. Now this main menu is going to say that you don't have Multi-ROM's various elements installed, and it also says that it couldn't download an update for you. To fix that second issue, tap the three dot menu button and go to settings. From here, scroll down to the bottom and find the version entry. Tap this entry seven times in rapid succession and you get a toast message saying that you've enabled developer options. So scroll down a bit further now and you'll see a set of new options. Tick the box next to this override manifest URL option to begin. From here tap the manifest URL option then you'll have to make a tiny tweak to this address. Basically right after the multi-ROM portion of this URL just add a dash then the word test in lowercase letters. When you're done with that press OK then back out to the app's main menu. From here tap the refresh button at the top of the screen, then Multi-ROM Manager will check the new URL and find the test builds of its mod for the Nexus 6. When all of that is loaded up you'll see an install update card. Make sure all of the options on this card are checked, then press install. This next part may take a little while, something like 30 seconds probably, because it's applying all of the various patches that are needed to run multiple ROMs. But when it's done, the app will inform you that it needs to boot into your custom recovery to apply one last mod. Tap reboot on this pop-up and your phone will automatically reboot into recovery and a script will flash the remaining portions of the multi-ROM mod. You don't need to interact with it at all though, so just sit back and wait for your phone to reboot. When you get back up, go ahead and open the multi-ROM manager app to make sure everything went off without a hitch. The status card at the top of the screen should show version numbers for the multi-ROM and recovery entries and the kernel listing should have green text next to it. If that's the case, you're ready to install a secondary ROM. As with the primary ROM, this one will also have to support either the stock kernel or a Cyanogen CAF kernel. So download all ROM related zips that you would normally download when flashing a custom ROM, then the next step is to boot into custom recovery. Once you've made it into your custom recovery, tap the advanced option. And here you'll see a multi-ROM entry. Go ahead and tap it. From here choose add ROM. Then make sure this next screen is set to Android up top 
and internal memory down below. After that, hit Next. Then you'll be asked to select a source for your secondary ROM files. So choose Zip File here. From there, browse and select the custom ROM file that you'd like to flash. Then swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to install it. When that's finished, you may want to install a GApps package. If so, just head back out to the main menu, then go to Advanced and Multi-ROM again. From here, choose List ROMs, then select the ROM you just installed. After that, choose Flash Zip, then select your GApps package. Again, just swipe the slider at the bottom of the screen to install the GApps package on top of your secondary ROM. Then when that's finished, tap Reboot System. Now the booting process will be a little different than it was before. After the Google Boot screen, you'll see a Boot Menu dialog. Tap Cancel on this dialog if you don't want it to boot into your primary ROM automatically. From here, just select your secondary ROM, then tap it again to boot into it. Beyond that, just sit back and wait for your new ROM to boot up, and from now on you'll have multiple instances of Android to boot into. But for the full breakdown, be sure to check out my article over on GadgetHacks.com. And as always, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time, folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking!